In the Bible, in that last series of ours, we identified the nations that are found in Daniel chapter number 7. These beasts, which were defined by the scriptures as being kingdoms, were actually separate kingdoms. Uh, each one representing a nation on the earth now. Uh, the lion is Great Britain. The eagle uh, represents America which was represented in the eagle's wings that was broken off of the lion. Uh, the bear is Russia. The leopard is Germany. The United Nations has five permanent members called the UN Security Council. They're also called the Big Five. While the United States actually founded the United Nations and the United States has veto power both China, France, Russia, and the United Kingdom have power also to veto any decision taken. While Germany is not found among the five members <coughs> that we talked about that have veto power, the German and British foreign ministers have agreed to hold an annual strategic dialogue on international affairs in a joint statement that supports a permanent seat for Germany on the UN Security Council. See, Germany was treated different than the other nations because you got to remember that Germany was the aggressor in World War II. And so they had to deal with a problem with Germany always wanting to start wars. If you remember, Germany also started the Great War, which was considered World War I. And so they knew that there was a problem with Germany. And so they had to hold them at a distance. They didn't, wasn't allowed to participate like these other nations. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about UN versus EU. Uh, when I say, when I say, uh, UN versus EU, I'm talking about the United Nations versus the European Union. Because sometimes these things confuse us a little bit. Uh, what is the difference between the United Nations and the European Union or the EU, as some call it? <clears throat> the European Union, which also makes up the Holy Roman Empire, currently has 20 eight members and the United Nations currently has 193 members. The European Union is limited to Europe while the United Nations is to the whole world. When the European Union was founded, it was an organization which concentrated its efforts on the economy of the member states. It provided them with a single platform to market their products and sell them to a unified economy. And you think about what I just said when you were talking about a unified economy. Because if one member in that unified group decides to go in a different direction, they can, act, they can actually sanction them or, or restrict them from participating in the market. And so they were able to hold people to, together in the same uh, uh, goal. The United Nations, on the other hand, is an organization made to keep the peace between nations and to prevent war from happening between countries. The UN is sold as an organization that provides all countries in the world with a platform where they can raise their voices and get their opinions worked at after acceptance by the other member states. So, the United Nations means world security. In other words, the purpose in the United Nations, the reason <clears throat> that the United Nations was put in place was because of the concerns over World War I 
which at that time they created what's called the League of Nations. <clears throat> and then when it went over into World War II because they rejected it, we're going to talk about that a little more in depth. <clears throat> but when it went, when it went into uh, World War II, where they had 58 million people that died in that war opposed to the 8.1 or 2, I believe it was, under World War I, they decided at that point to go forward with world government. So the United Nations, the purpose in it from its inception was the concern about world security because of what Germany had done and what Hitler had done. Now, when we look at the European Union, the purpose in the European Union is to bring about European economic growth and strength in their eco economic situation in all of the v various nations or countries within Europe. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to help people to understand the difference between the United Nations and the European Union. Now, the European Union is seen in the beast, in the last beast in Daniel chapter 7, where the Bible talked about a single beast that had 10 horns. You remember that one? And it was unlike any of the other beasts. That represents the 10 nations are the ten rulers of the of the nations during the time of Jesus Christ's second coming, which is at the seventh trumpet that will take place at that point. This is also this beast and its ten horns also represents the ten toes of the image, which we're going to talk about that as well. In fact, I've got, a, uh, I've got a diagram that I'm going to bring up pretty soon. We're going to go over that to tie all this together. But that ten horn system on the beast, also the ten toes represents the same. It's the iron mixed with the clay. It's the religious part of the Holy Roman Empire or the Roman Empire and the political because if you remember, there's a religious side with a religious leader called the false prophet that's going to uh, share power with the Antichrist, which is the political leader. So we have both the religious leader and the political leader seen in the iron mixed with clay. And so this is the difference between the two. You have the United Nations representing the security of the world and the European Union representing the economic situation of Europe, not of the world, but of Europe at this point. Now, let's look at the, at the term New World Order. Very important. The New World Order is depicted in both Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 13. And these are not the only places we find this. We also find this in the feet of the image. We talked about that. Daniel spoke in Daniel chapter number 2. But we find evidence of, the, of, the, uh, of this on the back of the dollar bill. Uh, Ask yourself the question, why is the term New World Order on the back of the dollar bill? And another question is, why did they write this in a foreign language? You remember on the back of the dollar bill, we find a pyramid and below it, we find the Latin words, Novus Ordo Seclorum. Novos <clears throat> means new, ordo means order, order, <clears throat> and seclorum means secular 
or world. So it's new world order. Next question is why did they put this on the back of the dollar bill? Why did they do this? And who put it there? It was put there by Democrat President Franklin D. Roosevelt, but why? Roosevelt had dreams of creating a one world government system. He also became the instigator behind the formation of the United Nations. When Roosevelt put New World Order on these bills in 1935, he was looking ahead 10 years to 1945 when the United Nations was actually born. This was a result of World War II with the death of 52 million people. They had their excuse to create world government. They finally got what they wanted, what they wasn't able to accomplish during the Great World War. New World Order is world government. There's no doubt that this is the world government prophesied in the Bible for the end of the age. This will also be the government that the Antichrist will rule. Now let's look at the place in the Bible that speaks about this world government system. It's found in Revelations chapter 13 verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> it reads... And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Notice that in Daniel 7, there was four beasts. The lion, the bear, the leopard, and the ten-horned beast. And they were all separate beasts. Here it says in Revelations 13, And the beast which I saw was like... So now he sees the beast. And it was like a leopard with feet like a bear and the mouth was like the mouth of a lion this is what this beast was like this beast was empowered by the dragon which we find in revelations chapter 13 it tells us that the dragon is that old serpent the devil which is Satan we don't have to wonder if that's what the beast is we don't have to find some book to tell us what it is the Bible tells us that in the 13th chapter and if you read chapter 12 and add that with it it gives you a clear picture also, this beast has seven heads and ten horns. Notice, the same symbols in Daniel 7 are used here in Revelation. Again, in Revelation, it's one beast, but in Daniel, it's four separate beasts. The book of Daniel was written in 550 B.C. and the book of Revelation was written in 98, or 96, excuse me, AD. So we're talking about 650 years apart by two different people. Both Daniel and John are writing about the same thing. In Daniel, he has these beasts separate because they are separate nations in the beginning. But John points out that these same nations will merge into one great nation or world order. Remember, 
Daniel 7.23 interprets what these beasts symbolize. We don't have to guess what it means. A beast is a kingdom or nation. Again, these nations in Daniel 7 merge into one great nation. Found in Revelation 13. This is a picture of a world government system or new world order. The lion is Great Britain. The bear is Russia. The leopard is Germany. The ten-horned beast is the Holy Roman Empire revived. Because remember, there was a Roman Empire under the time of Jesus Christ, which is represented in the legs of the image in Daniel chapter 2. You remember we talked about that. And so now we have a Holy Roman Empire that's represented in the, in the ten-horned beast. But revelations, but in revelations, these same beasts become one beast. These same nations become one nation. Again, you have these nations in Daniel 7 combined with the ten heads which take in these European nations making up the new world order. And remember the dragon or Satan gave this new world order its power and its seat and its great authority. It's authority. But something is missing. Notice this. This is key. This is extremely important. Going back to Revelation 13, 1 through 2, through 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave his power and his seat and his great authority. Notice, the eagle's wings are not mentioned in this verse. What happened to the eagle's wings? Now, in all fairness, the wings of the fowl are also not mentioned in here either. But when we consider the fact that the prophecy of the eagle, it says, was made to stand up like a man. Remember we talked about that in our last lesson. This eagle, it says, was made to stand up like a man and a man's heart was given to it found in Daniel 7 and 4. Could this mean that America totally rejects this world government? Think about that. You know under the Trump administration he ran on the he ran on the policy, America First policy. And he also ran on the plan of, of doing away with world government, coming out of it. Could it be that America is, the, is one of the nations, because there will be nations that will reject this world government. Could America be such a nation? According to history, after World War I and the death of 8 million people in the promoters of the United Nations, wanted to create world government then, but there was too much opposition to it at that time. Grassroots America, especially the Bible Belt, has always opposed world government. Bible readers know that Revelation 12 tells us Satan is the instigator of world government and empowers it, in fact. And in fact will rule it as the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be the ruler of this world government. Satan will give this new world order its power, seat, and authority according to scripture but to be clear one world government the globalization process and the new world order is of the devil according to the Bible it's inspired by Satan the Bible lets us know that it's the dragon 
which the Bible defines as the serpent or the devil gives this beast, this new world order, its power and its seat and its great authority. Satan is also considered in the book of Ephesians the prince of this world. So he has been ordained with the power of this age. God allows him to hold that position to fulfill his word. There's a reason for it. <clears throat> Think about it. The New World Order has power over the media, the banking system, political systems, education, and even religious organizations are led like sheep. And many are even ignorant of this fact. You remember the all-seeing eye? called the all-seeing eye of Horus. The all-seeing eye also on the back of the dollar bill signifies their desire to watch your every move. Remember the all-seeing eye on those old clips of CBS News where they had the all-seeing eye? So they want to watch and control every aspect of men's lives. Let's look again at Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, Revelation 13 and 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads. Underscore the word seven heads having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. In verse 3 it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Now we're, gonna, we're going to go uh, pretty deep on this subject of this deadly wound. Uh, we're, in fact, it's, we're going to cover it more probably in the, in the next few lessons ahead of us. But remember that this beast has seven heads. I saw one of, its, one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed and all the world wonder after the beast. Why do these beasts have seven heads? Let's count the heads on the beast that is found in Daniel chapter number 7. All right, the lion has one head. The bear has one head. The leopard has four heads. And the ten-horned beast has one head. So there's your seven heads total. So we have all seven heads. So you have the lion, which is Great Britain. You have the bear, which is Russia. You have the leopard, which is Germany, which has the four heads on, on this one beast. And you have the ten-horned beast, which is the Holy Roman Empire. This Holy Roman Empire is also known as, as we said, the European Union, which now Great Britain has come out of it in what's known as Brexit. I don't know if you've been keeping up with the news uh, in reference to Brexit. Brexit as in Britain exits the European Union, so they call it Brexit. All right, we have came to a stopping point here. Uh, we're going to well, hold on. Let's, we got a little bit more time. Let me cover just a little bit more. All of these nations signify in Daniel 7 have now become one great beast or world power. 
found in Revelation chapter 13. All of these nations now make up the new world order of the Antichrist with the false prophet, which will be leading false Christianity. Remember, there's not a false, there's not a false prophet for no reason. There's going, to be a, there's going to be people that will follow false Christianity. Catholicism is false Christianity. The Pope is the leader of false Christianity. Now I know they agree with they disagree with this. They, they claim that they're in truth. But remember the lessons that we had, and we're going to go into it even further, about all of the ecumenical councils where they changed the doctrines. Remember, they changed the doctrines of the scriptures, of the Bible, through these ecumenical councils. And so the false prophet will be leading this religious group of people that have compromised the truth. You know, the Bible said, I believe it was John said, if any man come to you and bring not this gospel, receive them not into your home. Neither worship them God's speed, for all they that worship God's speed are partakers of their evil works. John let us know that we cannot compromise the true message of the gospel. Paul said in Galatians, if I or an angel come to you and teach any other gospel but this, if an angel come to you and teach you something different, don't accept it. But we have people that today just follow religion. They follow their feelings. They follow family members. They follow friends. They have social uh, activity with people. And so it's, they, have, they have allowed themselves to feel comfortable in that rather than knowing that they're following truth. Again, Paul makes it clear. If someone comes along, even an angel, and teaches something that's incorrect according to the gospel, we can't, we can't accept it. We have to reject it. We can't, the Bible says, take heed to the doctrine. You know, we live in a time where the word doctrine has become almost a bad word. People talk about doctrine. People say, oh, we, I, I remember one time, I remember someone one time making the statement, a preacher one time back years ago, said, in our church, we don't teach doctrine. But the Bible teaches for us to maintain sound doctrine. Not only is it a command in the scriptures that we maintain doctrine, but we are to maintain sound doctrine. So it's at the utmost of importance, doctrine is. It's extremely important that we follow truth. Because in the end times, we talked about this battle of Armageddon and the seventh trumpet. And we talked about the antichrist and false prophet that's going to be judged and cast into the lake of fire. Judgment is coming on false Christianity. As a whole. In fact, if you remember Revelation 17, the Bible says, uh, the, 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 the angel said, uh, uh, in, in John's writings, said, said, don't be partakers of, said, come out of her and don't be partakers of her sins, of her iniquities, of her fornication. When it was talking in, rever in, in relation to false Christianity, because that's what it was talking about. When it talked about the great whore and, and, uh, and it's signifying uh, uh, that she sat upon a hill, the seven mountains, which is Rome, Italy, where the Vatican sits. So it's pointing toward false Christianity. It says, don't be a partaker of this. Because if you do, judgment's going to come upon you as well. 
And so we're commanded to reject false doctrine and hold to the truth of Scripture. Thank God. So we've run out of time. We're going to close at this point with this lesson. And we're looking forward to you being with us in our next lesson. We're going to pick up where we left off. And we're going to go a little bit deeper 